Hi guys and welcome to today's video on the calculating the correlation coefficient. It's really good to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, in our previous video, if you remember, we looked at the idea of Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is basically a numerical value, and I am reading this, given to a measure of the linearity of a series of points on a scatter plot. Whoa, that's a lot of language. What does that mean? First thing, it is really, really important for you to note that we do not use this to decide if there is an association. It is just the value of R, this Pearson's correlation coefficient, is nothing more than a value given to how close those little kisses are to a perfect straight line. All right, And obviously, as we say here, we have these values falling between and as we say here, we have the values falling between minus 1 and 1. And if you remember, minus 1 basically means that the kisses go in a perfect line uh, straight down in a negative sense. And a plus 1 means a positive sense. For all other values, well, that meant that the crosses were getting further and further away from what we would call a perfectly straight line. Now, guys, if you haven't already done so, do me a favor and subscribe by clicking that little doohickey in the corner. Why? Well, basically, it's really important to me to know that people are actually watching these videos and that, that there are people subscribing. I'm never going to get rich, never going to get famous, but it's good if you can subscribe. And also, there's MathsGuru.com, which is absolutely free to sign up to and has all of these videos organized by textbook, by chapter, and the downloadable notes. Now, back to our table that we got uh, from the Cambridge Further Maths textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge. Basically then says that we could describe our scatter line or our scatter plot in terms of a strength, a direction, and a form. All right, and so you had strong, positive, and linear. And where do we get these values from? Well, the table that is shown. Yes, and those values of R became really important. The only other one to remember is an R value equal to zero means uh, basically there is no association. It's all over the place. But again, it does not mean that what is on my explanatory variable is in any way related to what is on my response variable. It is just a measure of how tight those little kisses are. And in a later video, I can tell you now that I can show an almost perfect correlation, almost perfect correlation between the number of IKEA stores a country has and its number of uh, Nobel Prize winners. All right. Now, to me, there is absolutely no relationship to that whatsoever. I think that's a coincidence. But anyway, too much information. OK. But what is this value of R? How on earth are we going to find this value of R? Well, there are two ways of doing it. One, by hand, and two, using your CAS calculator. Praise be to the CAS calculator. Now, first things first, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. Yes, it's a little bit long, it's a little bit laborious, but you never know. In a SAC or an exam, you may be asked to do some or all of the process. You do not know. It's better to understand how to do it than just praise be the calculator. So the first thing is we need a formula. And this is a formula you're going to write in your summary book. And it seems a little bit confusing. But actually, it's like a roadmap. It's going to teach you how to do this step by step by step. And I'm going to sort of zoom out just a little bit. And then I'm going to say, right, so we have this value of R, which we know is so we have this value of R, which we now know is this E symbol. That's nothing more than sum. So it's telling you to sum something. And normally, we sum all the things after that little E symbol. So I'm going to open a set of brackets, and it says x minus x bar. Now, where we have the letter x, it normally means for each individual x data value. So the x stands for the data value. What does this x bar stand for? Well, you've met it before. It means the mean. And in this situation, the mean of all the x values. So Working through x is an x data item, and x bar is the mean or average of the x data, which we can work out. Add them together, divide by how many they are. You're going to multiply that by y minus y bar, funnily enough. And again, you're going to take the y values, and you're going to take away the mean of all the y values. It says here, the y data subtracts the mean or average. And again, you could work that out. Luckily, I've done it all for you. You are going to divide by, by the number of data items minus 1. That's really important. I recorded this video earlier and forgot to take away the 1. Had to do the whole thing again. And here is the result. And then I'm going to times it by Sx and Sy. Now, what is this Sx and Sy? Well, again, Sx is the standard deviation of the x data, and Sy is the standard deviation of the y data. OK, so that's the formula. 
And if we understand how to deconstruct that formula, we can use it to help us create a table to work all of this out. And that's what I'm going to do. So we have an example from Cambridge. And there we go. We've got some x values and we have some y values. And they've told me that x bar is 4, y bar is 5, sx is 2.236 and sy is 3.082. Fabulous, thank you very much. They've given me the information. How am I going to use it? Now, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mathsguru.com, yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there, it's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think, it is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much, take care guys, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.